Hey Chris, what's your toxic trait in filmmaking? It's not charging my batteries. Right now, I have every single piece of equipment I'm using is plugged into the wall because I forgot to charge all of it. Good thing I'm not vlogging today. What's up, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. If there's a person in the frame, I like to photograph it. Uh, outside of that, I make silly little YouTube videos. And I've been doing that for a few months now and it's been a ton of fun. But what it has really shown me is that there's a huge need for streamlining your process when it comes to things like YouTube. And I wanna talk a little bit about how I'm trying to accomplish that uh, moving forward. So for a long time, I shot with Fujifilm. And with Fujifilm, what's great about it is that you have these film simulations. You've probably seen a million people talk about them online because they're super fun. They're basically baked in profiles to make your camera look more, I don't know, stylized. I won't say like filmic, but just to like look different. You can do a lot of different stuff with them. I'm, I'm sure you've seen them. I didn't switch away from Fujifilm entirely, like at least in my heart. I will definitely pick up another Fujifilm camera soon. I'm actually debating which one I wanna get, but right now my main and only camera is the Lumix S52X. I really like this camera, but I do miss that sort of element of Fujifilm that really lets you just have fun with the camera. However, there's a super cool thing which you've probably also heard of if you're watching this video called Real Time LUTs. Real Time LUTs allow you to apply a look to your photo and video, and I actually think these are more powerful than what you can get out of the Fujifilm film simulations that are built in because you can go into DaVinci or Premiere Pro or whatever you use to color grade. You can create a LUT based on a photograph that you've taken. You can then take that and you can put it into your camera and use that moving forward. Now, there's other videos on how to do that. I'll, I'll link them here because there's no point in me like putting you through those paces when you can just go watch a video dedicated to that. But I kind of wanted to just show you a little bit of what I was doing to try and streamline my YouTube setup using real-time LUTs. Yesterday, my partner and I went to Buffalo because we were bored and uh, it was a holiday here in Canada. And I decided to do some tests with the camera and using a particular LUT. It's the same one I'm using right now. So this is a Portra 400 look. I pulled it off some website. I'll, I'll link it here as well. This isn't really about this LUT. This is more about how much can you push and pull this camera and still get good quality images when you're throwing real-time LUTs on top. So I'm using the natural profile in this camera, and then on top of that, we're throwing the LUT. From there, I've made a couple of tweaks. Again, I'll put them up right here, and you can see what this looks like. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some footage from the day as well as some photos, and then we're gonna burn through a couple different LUTs here that I've uploaded onto the camera just to see how different you can make the same image look by pushing these LUTs into your camera and baking it into the footage. intrusive thoughts of like make something up tell a lie like some elaborate story as to why we're going to a coffee shop in Buffalo I'm not gonna do it we did Yay. it's in French where are we we drove too far we went to Louisiana
so vlogging's hard. Uh, we got about halfway through the day and I was like, ah, screw it. Uh, not entirely, like we went to that coffee shop and they didn't like us being there. And then uh, after a little while of, you know, going around, we just decided we were gonna go to Trader Joe's and stuff like that. And they don't like you filming there either. So, so we called it. But the idea was basically to just show you like, okay, fun little summertime road trip what kind of look can we get for that? So the Kodak Portra 400 look, pushing, I know it doesn't look like Kodak Portra 400, it's just the name of it, but pushing that kind of like warm look. The one thing I found is that the highlights definitely fell apart. I think that that LUT is a little too aggressive. I think what would be cool is if you could then kind of adjust the LUT and, and bring the amount of it down. So like if you could have like a sort of like a, you know, a gain adjustment on it to say like, okay, I wanna blend in like 80% of the LUT but that's maybe asking a lot. Now we're clearly on to a second look here. Um, I would say that what's interesting with this is seeing what it's doing to the greens, seeing what it's doing to the skin tones. The number one thing, no matter what, is that when you're throwing a creative look onto your film, you need to make sure that the skin tones don't look totally insane. Now there can be a look like, like I don't know, I think of something like Amelie or something like that, where you have this color grade over top of the entire movie that eventually your eyes just kind of get used to and it starts to look, like it doesn't look completely normal, but it all fits together. So even though the skin tones might look kind of wild, I guarantee if you were to vector scope that and you were to throw that in there, you would see that they're still falling into where they need to relative to the color grade that they're using. So how does this actually help with my workflow? Oh, also, as you can tell, we've switched again. We're on to a look that's supposed to emulate that movie Seven. It obviously doesn't in this scenario because I don't have something terrifying in a box. Uh, anyways, how is this going to affect my workflow moving forward? Well, what's kind of nice to think about is I can start to create my own looks, my own LUTs, and I can have those built into the camera. So if I have a YouTube studio setup at some point where I can control all the lighting, which I can't do here because I've got window lighting coming in and we're just lucky that it's kind of, you know, a little more overcast today. But if I can control my lighting, what I can do is I can bake in a LUT that I know is gonna work repeatedly every single time. So I could just use like a base Rec 709 conversion LUT, that would work really well. But if I wanted to have something a little more stylized, a little more my own vibe, what I could do is throw that on top of the footage and I would know reliably every time I did a YouTube video, at least that portion of the video would always look the same. It means that I can be a lot faster in my turnaround of videos, and it also means that I can have a look for my channel. That's something that I have been kind of messing around with over time here. I've been using lots of different color styles and, and things to try and see what resonates with me. I mean, if it were up to me, I would probably do everything in black and white because I love black and white. And uh, uh, hold on, on that note, that's better. This is the look I love. now. I'm curious, like if you were to see a YouTube channel other than uh, Three Blind Men and an Elephant or whatever that guy's called, Hugh, his channel's incredible. If you were to see a channel that was reliably in black and white for all the talking heads, what would you watch it? Would you get tired of watching? People, I don't know, people do not have the like, cotton, I'm having a conversation here. So this is a test profile I made for both color and black and white. I find it works really nicely. What I did was I took a couple of portraits that I had done, I put them into DaVinci and I threw a color grade on them. And I can use it for both photo and video. I find it works well with color and with black and white. So right now it's sort of my like testing all around LUT that I really like the look of in black and white. I think it looks beautiful on color. I think it can look really soft and, and, and really portrait like, and, and I like that a lot too. I'll put a little link in the description here where you can download this. I'm not saying it's an incredible LUT by any means, but I'd be curious to see how it works on your footage. Again, it is just a gentle LUT that goes on top of a natural profile. So when you are putting this into your camera, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create your own like photo style in the camera. You're going to use the natural profile. You're gonna go all the way down to where you can put on the real-time LUTs and then you'll apply this LUT. I can't guarantee it's gonna work in every different profile, but I do think in the natural and even in the standard, it can work really nicely. So let's switch to color and, and see what that looks like. So here we are, a nice gentle look that you can use to create your kind of base around from here. You can go in, you can adjust the saturation, you can adjust contrast, highlights, shadows, fall up, all that kind of stuff that you can do in the camera. But I think this is a nice, easy place to start. The other thing you can do is really play with the white balance. Right now I'm using daylight white balance because I have my light set up to daylight. It's kind of cloudy outside, but overall this is kind of a good balance. So if I wanted to really push this look further, I wanted to get more creative with it, 
that's probably where I would start. Thank you so much. I'd love to hear how you're using the real-time LUTs to try and change or augment your footage to improve your workflow, to just have some fun, to try and create some more like fun vibes for your videos or your photos. Is it helping you get over that feeling of like, oh, I wish I shot with Fujifilm? Maybe, maybe not. I think the other real secret sauce about Fujifilm is actually just the cameras themselves are so fun to use. This camera's fine to use, but it just feels like you're using a camera for work. And uh, that's the big difference. So I'll be super curious to see what Lumix is announcing this week and, and if that supposed like S9 little camera that's supposed to come out is gonna solve that. Because if it does, then that might become my B cam, which would be super fun. So we'll see. Uh, thanks so much. Appreciate you. Go out there and shoot some real time LUT stuff and send it to me or don't, I don't physically send it to me because I have nowhere for you to send it, but post it and show it to me. And yeah, cool. Peace.